with um, given your long experience in this uh, this business what is it that's drawn you into this controversy now well I was drawn into this controversy uh, way back in the late 70s uh, when I became the chairman of the board of the Tennessee Valley Authority and uh, we had uh, what I would call an armada of nuclear power plant units that were under construction and the cost overruns became so horrible uh, that just purely on the basis of economics uh, my vote shut down eight of these thousand megawatt reactors uh, while they were being constructed uh, they were, the costs were that much out of line so uh, I my first exposure uh, to nuclear uh, power as an executive was back then and I found that in order to make them meet even the NRC's safety standards they just cost too much and uh, we were better off with uh, conservation and uh, and we, we had a, a huge energy efficiency program that was cheaper and quicker and far cleaner than nuclear power. Uh, and then I moved on to manage the Sacramento Municipal Utility District and the people voted to shut down the nuclear reactor there and we, uh, I had the job of burying the plant. It supplied 50% of SMUD's power supply and we were able to replace it without rate increases and Sacramento is now one of the better utilities in the country with reasonable rates and life was a whole lot better after nuclear power but I think the thing that really changed my mind was when I visited Chernobyl five years after the accident in 1991 and I saw a monument with the name of villages on it that were dead and went out there and, and uh, talked to a few people that were still hanging around and when I talked to them about the possibility of solar power they actually cried with joy that there was an alternative and uh, I met the mothers of the poor kids that were marching around on May Day five days after the accident and were exposed because the Soviets didn't tell them about it and I realized that this was a monster and so uh, today I feel that we got the final wake-up call at Fukushima and uh, that we need to phase out and shut down the 104 reactors in America. I will put it very bluntly, we need to kill them before they kill us. But you have to understand the nuclear industry and the people that run it. To them, they have, and I say this advisedly, they have a religious belief in nuclear power. So facts don't interfere. You know, religion is belief. Uh, they believe in nuclear power. And I tell you how it came about. Uh, it started off as a guilt trip. We dropped the bomb in World War II, and President Truman said right after he found out about it, he said, well, we've got to make something good out of this evil. And so the whole nation started off with civilian uh, uh, nuclear power plants as a gigantic guilt trip. And so we overlooked the dangers inherent in it, and we thought we were doing something good. There was no other alternative to coal back then. We hadn't harnessed the sun yet and hadn't developed wind power. And so we got into this thing uh, we, sort of oblivious to the fact that there is no peaceful atom, uh, that they all lead toward the bomb. Otherwise, we wouldn't be trying to talk Iran into not building a nuclear power plant because we... We know that once you learn how to enrich uranium, you enrich it a bit more and you, you make bombs. So, uh, but we were oblivious to all that. And so the, the Edison Company and the people in that power plant, they believe it's safe. And I use the word believe advisedly. Because uh, I've been down there in the nuclear power plants and talked to people. And uh, especially in the Tennessee Valley uh, where we made uh, the first bomb it's almost like oil in Houston, but uh, there's a tendency, I, I'm formerly a civil engineer, and there's a tendency of most engineers to really believe that the technology that they have built is, is safe. 
And, and so you're up against folks that are not subject to just rational thought process because they have a, a belief that's religious in nature in their technology and they, they, it just slides off. It's kind of like uh, back when Kennedy uh, ran against Nixon and my next door neighbor was a, a real solid Democrat, but he kept telling me why he was going to vote uh, for Nixon. And it was all because Kennedy was a Catholic and he, he just wouldn't face up to it. When you have, uh, have a religious type belief or a prejudice, you're not subject to rational thinking. The cost factor, the thing that stopped the power plants in the Tennessee Valley, uh, which was that the electric rates were going up, up, up because the cost overruns of the nuclear plants. And so when the bill for replacing the steam generators uh, at San Onofre are added to the bill that's going to be required if they make it uh, strong enough to withstand uh, the next earthquake and the bill that will be required if they have to put in cooling towers because the State Water Resources Board won't let them keep sucking all the water out of the ocean and killing the fish. When all those bills add up, uh, I think we'll be able to show that it's uneconomic. And I, I don't think that it's possible for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to ever change its habits of being mainly a puppy dog rather than a watchdog uh, because uh, it's influenced uh, by the industry. In matter of fact, you don't get confirmed nowadays to be on the Nuclear Regulatory Commission unless you, quote, believe in nuclear power. They can't just charge it to the ratepayers. We do have regulatory commissions at the state level whose job it is to protect the ratepayer, and that's where the fight has to be waged. And there has to be a good deal more interest in what happens at the State Public Utility Commission than, than has taken place in the past, because uh, most environmental organizations have not gotten their hands dirty uh, with the hard job of putting in evidence uh, before a regulatory commission to show that these costs are, are just going up, 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 and of course, thus far, the old plants uh, have not had additional costs. Fukushima is a wake-up call, and we have to realize uh, that just because a dog is sleeping doesn't mean it isn't going to wake up and bite you. It's, a, it's not just the nuclear reactor itself, but all of the spent fuel, all of the nuclear trash that has piled up for 30 years. People don't realize the trash man, the federal trash man, never came. And if you can imagine, in your backyard, uh, your trash piling up for 30 years, uh, that's the situation at, at just about every one of these nuclear power plants. But it's especially dangerous at San Onofre uh, and Doblo Canyon because these are plants that are near earthquake faults. And the utilities haven't spent the money to take them out of a swimming pool and put them in a dry concrete cask where they'd be a little bit more impregnable and uh, can withstand earthquakes. The problem in a nuclear power plant is not just the reactor itself, but it's the fact that the nuclear trash, uh, the, the spent, they call it spent fuel, but it's really what remains uh, after the uranium is used to make electricity. Uh, and it's full of radioactivity. That trash has been piling up ever since the reactor started in 1980 in San Onofre. So you got 30 years of nuclear trash. The whole idea was the federal government was supposed to come along and take it and put it underground somewhere. The problem is that they haven't found a safe place to put it. You know why? Because there isn't any safe place on this earth uh, to put stuff that's going to be radioactive for a million years. So uh, we have a moral dilemma. Uh, we are making uh, radioactive material every time we generate electricity that we don't know where to put it and where it's going to remain uh, highly poisonous for almost eternity. Now, to my mind, uh, if you're religious in any faith, that is a moral question. What right do we have to contaminate uh, this 
earth of ours and the inhabitants of it almost forever. I mean, I would hope that this is the kind of birth control that everybody could agree on. I think at this stage of the game, number one is stop making any more of it, which means shut down uh, in an orderly manner all of the, the nuclear reactors that exist. But the waste that exists, I think the best thing that you can do is to leave it where it is, but take it out of those swimming pools and put it in dry concrete casts and let it sit there. As a matter of fact, I think that's what should be done with the reactors themselves. I think that it is a mistake to spend billions of dollars cutting up an old reactor into pieces, exposing the workers to the radioactivity, and putting it in a shallow grave somewhere. Uh, I just think that they should remain as monuments to an effort that was tried in good faith and failed, namely a nuclear power. We need to replace it uh, with what we now know is truly clean energy, solar, wind, and we know how to store electricity so that we can use it when we need it. And, and that would create a huge number of jobs to build the replacement power. But the point that I'm making is that it will be cost effective over time to do that. Because if we keep these nuclear power plants running, uh, it's going to cost so much money to make them safe enough even to meet uh, the NRC standards uh, because the earthquakes are now we realize larger than we anticipated so that requires rebuilding these things that's really what enabled me to shut down the plants in the Tennessee Valley after Three Mile Island then we had a nuclear regulatory commission appointed by President Carter that was pretty strict and they made us almost rebuild the things to make them safer I'm hoping that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission will come down with post-Fukushima lessons that will require costs that will be prohibitive. So the economics is what can shut these plants down. And if you look at all of them with water shortages throughout the country, I think you'll find that each one of these plants, that in order to make them uh, compatible with the environment, uh, it, it's, it's too expensive. You know, they advertise this stuff is too cheap to meter. But what it's turning out to be is too expensive to use. And how much water do they use? Well, they'll use, they take enormous amounts of uh, water. They don't consume the water. Uh, some, uh, they consume a, a much, bunch of it through evaporation. But if you take the water out of a river or out of the ocean and run it to dissipate the heat, you're going to lose a lot of it in evaporation. Uh, but what happens is in the summertime, the water itself, it gets so hot that you can't use it anymore. So the power plant has to be shut down. So the nuclear power plants are chasing their own tail here. Uh, global warming is making them uh, less use useful. And I think it's a technology that we tried in good faith in the 70s, and we just need to phase out of it. I'm not saying that every plant uh, could be shut down overnight, but certainly one that, like San Onofre, that's leaked steam and that pretty clearly now needs new steam generators that I don't think the utility is willing to pay for itself, uh, you know, we, we need to give it a, a decent burial. One of the reasons why Friends of the Earth is focusing on California, because it's a state that's declared itself wanting to have a clean energy future, it's already mandated that 33% of the electricity by 2020 has to be renewable. And I think uh, it is a state where we can, we've already shown in Sacramento that you can bury a nuclear power plant and, uh, and get along real fine without it, in fact, better. Uh, and the whole state can set that example. I think it can have a tremendous impact. That's why I'm spending my 86th year uh, trying to help make it happen. The uh, rules that came out after Three Mile Island required existing plants. In fact, it required plants under construction to change. Uh, I, you know, that raises an interesting point. The industry is bragging about how much safer their new design is than the existing plants. Well, if you turn that sentence upside down, what they're really saying is these old plants are a whole lot more dangerous 
than the new ones. And, and mostly the new ones are being opposed. So there's even more reason why we ought to be focusing on the old ones because they're the ones that are truly dangerous and they need to be phased out. Uh, you know, the ones near earthquakes need to be shut down, uh, I think, uh, right away. Uh, especially one that has a steam generator that's leaking radioactive steam and they don't know how to fix it. And, you know, uh, and I don't see how the consumers of California are going to pay another $670 million for new steam generators. I think that's, that's where the rubber hits the road when the economics uh, begin to show that the plant is going to cause rate increases. Then I think we have the public support for getting them shut down. I would say that uh, they ought to just use a little common sense here. Our experts have said that reducing the uh, speed, or that is the uh, power, uh, isn't going to cure the problem. As a matter of fact, there's a great danger that you reach a certain level that increases the vibration. Uh, the, the plant, the steam generators are defectively designed. I think the NRC is about to admit that themselves. So it's kind of like if you're driving your car down the road and steam starts coming out of the radiator and you say, sweetheart, we hadn't got time to stop. We'll just slow down. That ain't going to stop it. it uh, you know, uh, if something is broke, you've got to stop and fix it or get a new car. And uh, that's a very Simplistic, simplistic um, analogy, but I think it's true that if they don't, they don't. It's the design that is inherently flawed, and uh, there is no rational, scientific basis for assuming that operating it at a lower speed is going to cure uh, the problem. And, and you've got tubes that wore out in 18 months that were supposed to last 40 years. So uh, uh, are you going to make 6 million people in Southern California guinea pigs while you experiment whether you can get by another year or two at reduced speed? I don't think so. I don't think that's safety first. I think that's safety last. And what do you say to the, some very prominent people around the world that are claiming that nuclear, uh, nuclear renaissance is necessary to save the planet from climate change. I just say they're wrong. Uh, you know, uh, anybody that would substitute plutonium for carbon needs to think again. They're not thinking. Uh, they, they, are, they are without knowledge of the potential for solar, wind, and storage. They, they just uh, haven't thought it through. Uh, they are the victims of the propaganda machine, uh, which is the oil industry which tries to t tell people, yeah, we're for solar and wind. They're, they're, they're something we'll do 10, 15 years from now. They're the power plants of the future, and they always will be. Uh, that kind of propaganda has infected the president of the United States, who, who's in the State of the Union said he's for all of the above. Well, uh, that's just plain wrong. Mother Nature uh, is not for that policy. Uh, I mean, the carbon keeps going up. Uh, but nuclear power just got through wiping out a good chunk of Japan. It's already wiped out a good chunk of the Ukraine. And we have no idea of how many cancers are caused uh, by nuclear power uh, because uh, the radiation is a death ray, but it's invisible. And they keep saying nobody died at Three Mile Island. Uh, but, you know, the power plant died. It was over a billion dollars and radiation is emitted, we just, the fact that you can't prove it doesn't mean it doesn't exist and we know that there is no threshold level that all radiation uh, kills genes and it carries down from one generation to another. Uh, nobody in their right mind would build a radioactive factory rather than putting some solar panels on the ground. And that's the choice. And so I say to people, who, who say that we need to have nuclear power is, you know, think again. You know, don't just have a knee-jerk reaction uh, based upon 
uh, the advertisement of the energy industry and the so-called energy experts who are the victims of their own uh, bias and lack of knowledge. And besides, you have to realize that GE owns part of NBC, I think, and, and Westinghouse owns part of CBS. The media is pro-nuclear because the nuclear industry kind of owns big chunks of the media. And they spend lots of money on advertising. You know, you could stop nuclear power with just one law. Eliminate the federal insurance for nuclear power. Now, you would never drive a car that couldn't get insurance. And so you're in favor of a technology that the marketplace will not insure. You know, even a child, when they put their hand on a hot stove, learns not to do it again. Uh, we are underreacting uh, to Fukushima. Uh, you know, it is a frightening experience. Uh, and and uh, yes, I think it's frightening, uh, but that's not an overreaction. That's just facing uh, the truth, the facts, the possibility. There is an old, uh, just colloquial expression that says that it, in, anything that can go wrong will at the worst possible time. The worst possible time is when it happens. And it's just a question of when, uh, not whether. You don't need an expert to recognize that power plants, as they age, become more susceptible to breaking down. They're not fundamentally different than human beings. Uh, you know, metals deteriorate. Uh, things, uh, little things like the insulation on a wire will wear off over time. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission is so religiously caught up in nuclear power. They actually had a meeting the other day, a public meeting, I think it was on June the 7th, uh, in which they were considering 80-year operating licenses for these plants. Now that is a particular form of insanity uh, that I think is incurable in that they have a religious belief in this technology. Over an 80-year period, we have no idea of what can break down and go wrong in a power plant. But we certainly have a pretty good idea that the chance of an earthquake near then becomes very, very real. So, uh, uh, but ba basically, uh, you know, the public has got to assert itself on this issue because those radi radioactive dogs might sleep for a long time, but when they wake up, they don't just bark, they bite.